party loyalty and personal affection and precedence of the past must fall, I think, before the arbiter of men's action, the law itself. No man, not even the President of the United States, is above the law. For our system of justice and our system of government to survive, we must pledge our highest allegiance to the strength of the law and not to the common frailties of men. I read and reread and sifted and tested the mass of information and then I came to my conclusion that Richard Nixon, Nixon has beyond a reasonable doubt committed impeachable offenses which in my judgment are of sufficient magnitude that he should be removed from office. Now that announcement was met with a great deal of criticism from friends, from government officials, from colleagues in Congress. I was accused of making a political decision. And for anyone to think that this decision could be made on a political basis with so much at stake is something that I personally resent. It isn't easy for me to align myself against the President, to whom I gave my enthusiastic support in three presidential campaigns, on whose side I've stood in many a legislative battle, whose accomplishments in foreign and domestic affairs I've consistently applauded. But it's impossible for me to condone or ignore the long train of abuses to which he has subjected the presidency and the people of this country. The Constitution and my own oath of office demand that I bear true faith and allegiance to the principles of law and justice upon which this nation was founded. And I cannot in good conscience turn away from the evidence of evil that is to me so clear and compelling. My friend from Iowa, Mr. Maine, detailed some of the allegations against prior administrations. And I don't in any way question that. I, I agree with him that there was wrongdoing on the part of previous presidents, maybe all presidents. But I was not in a position where I had to take a stand where I approve or disapprove of blatant wrongdoing. And I am in that position now. I think it's a mistake for any of us to begin looking for one sentence or one word or one document which compels us to vote for or against impeachment. It's like looking at a mosaic and going down and focusing in on one single tile in the mosaic and say, I see nothing wrong in that one little piece of this mosaic. We have to step back and we have to look at the whole picture. And when you look at the whole mosaic of the evidence that's come before us, to me it's overwhelming beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's look at the president's own words. He uses the words cover up and cap on the bottle, and the plan, and containment. And he's concerned about wit what witnesses have said and what they will say. So the payment was made to Hunt. And it doesn't matter to me whether the president approved it before it was made. A conspirator, as all we lawyers know, can get in on a conspiracy at any point, even after the fact. So it's immaterial whether or not the point in time when he said, OK, I approve it, you pay it. The fact is, and the thing that's so appalling to me, is that the president, when this whole idea was suggested to him, didn't in righteous indignation rise up and say, get out of here, you're in the office of the president of the United States. How can you talk about blackmail and bribery and keeping witnesses silent? This is the presidency of the United States. And throw them out of his office and pick up the phone and call the Department of Justice and tell them there's an obstruction of justice going on. Someone's trying to buy the silence of a witness. But my president didn't do that. He sat there. And he worked and worked to try to cover this thing up so it wouldn't come to light. He didn't have to know because he already knew. And he consistently tried to cover up the evidence and obstruct justice. And as much as it pains me to say it, 
he should be impeached and removed from office.